All right, let's move on. We're talking about the grateful heart. If you look at our, or the front of your program this month, we've been talking about uh, financial prosperity, excuse me, financial health and prosperity. And we're moving into Thanksgiving, which is a wonderful opportunity to talk about things that we're grateful for and how we move gratitude into the idea of financial prosperity and abundance in every area of our life. So the grateful heart is what I'm talking about today. We don't inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it. What was really interesting in our trip to, uh, to uh, is it cold in here? Now that's autumn in a long sleeve shirt and I'm cold. All right, can we bump that up one degree, William? Thank you. All right, sorry about that. So it was interesting. You had a great time in um, Australia and New Zealand. I don't want to see another lamb, though, or eat lamb. I'm done eating lamb. I've, I've had so much lamb and gelato. You were right. It took me a half hour to find a pair of pants that fit this morning. All right. So we don't inherit the earth. We borrow it. Nothing is ours forever. Have you noticed that? Nothing is ever ours forever. We're borrowing everything that we experience in this lifetime. So, and we don't just have the earth as ours to use, we share it with everyone else. What was interesting, and I think I mentioned it on Dial and Idea last night, is it's so interesting to watch how um, we share a, a belief system with every place I travel, I find that there's a common thread with our spiritual journey and others, even though we're, they're not science of mind and they may be another religion or they call it by another name, there is a common thread that goes through all things. And I think that's the same thing about this earth that we live in. There's a commonality that we all have with each other. And when we start to recognize that and give great thanks for it, instead of trying to accentuate the differences and to separate us, let's find the common thread and be grateful for the common threads that we do have. Does that make sense? If we are the sum total of our thoughts, then every thought should begin and end in gratitude. Okay? If we're the sum total of our thoughts, if every thought becomes a thing, what if we started out every day in gratitude? What if we were grateful for absolutely everything? And now it's Thanksgiving, so this is, you always get my Thanksgiving uh, little mini talk all at once, which is how many people does it take to get a green bean to your table? <laughs> you remember that? How many people does it take to get a green bean to your table? And you're thinking four or five, right? Five, six maybe? Uh -huh, Thousands of people are involved in getting one green bean. You know why? Because someone not just has to plant it and, and harvest it, someone has to build the truck or the tractor that allows, uh, uh, how many people does it take to build a truck and a tractor to actually haul it and get it to you and put the roads down and put the stoplights up and to, to put the wheels on the truck and the tractor. And then they have to deliver it to the store and how many people are, I mean, really, when you think about it, there are really hundreds and hundreds of people involved in every thing, single thing that we have in our life, every single thing. Nothing is just one or, it's not a transaction between one or two people. Our lives are dependent upon hundreds and hundreds of people contributing to a greater good. So what if we thought and, and had every thought begin and day begin and end in gratitude? Grateful for all those people who had, a, had action and participation in creating our life, and then also grateful for what we were able to contribute to the lives of others. And not just be a biscuit on a plate, but actually be a participant in life. Does that make sense? Didn't go over well. Are you showing up with your gratitude? How are you showing up in debt gratitude in your daily life? There's traditional gratitude that, you know, thank you, right? The unexpected gratitude, the dodge the bullet gratitude. Whew, missed that one. Thank you, God, right? Right? There's the expected gratitude where you do something and now you expect something in return. We have to remember, how do we use gratitude? Because we use it in these different ways. Traditional gratitude is, you know, thank you, you're welcome. Thank you, you're welcome. The unexpected gratitude, which is, oh my God, thank you. What a great surprise. What a great surprise. And then again, the dodge the bullet. Thank God that didn't happen to me, right? But there's also the ones called expected. Now, what if we had an expectation of gratitude in that not expecting other people to perform for us or to give us something, but what if we had an expectation that we will be grateful for the day that we have, for the things that we have, and because of that gratitude, our day will really be even greater than what we expected. What if you knew that tonight you were going to say, thank you, God, for this day, not, whew, dodge that one today. How do you use your gratitude? Does that make sense? All right. A grateful heart sets the foundation that leads to a consciousness of prosperity. It is the beginning of the circle of giving and receiving. 
So this is the wonderful time of year where we see our abundance come to fruition in, in Thanksgiving, and we think, we, you know how that consciousness, I always have that abundance consciousness at Thanksgiving because I just eat an abundance of food, you know? And I mean, we're supposed to be appreciative and grateful for all those people and the, the, the pilgrims and the Indians and all that, and I'm like, no, I just want turkey. But anyway, <laughs> but a grateful heart sets the foundation for the circulation of things to come in and come out. The grateful heart allows the flow. It opens, if you have, if you have a little bit of flow in your life, a little bit of circulation, in, in other words, positive relationships, health, vitality, finances, whatever it is, health, whatever it is, if there's a little bit of flow, the grateful heart opens up that pipeline and creates even more and the ability for more to come in and go out. And keep in mind, in order for it to go out, it has to come in. In order for it to come in, it has to also, what? Go out. There must be a conscious belief on the part of those seeking to demonstrate this principle that their faith and thought are but the avenues through which the law expresses itself to them. Dr. Holmes wrote that in Can We Talk to God? There must be a conscious belief of those of us that are seeking to demonstrate the principle that we know that these avenues are the law expressing itself, not something to fix us. There's a difference. How many people, don't raise your hand, how many people are always looking for the fix? If you're looking for the fix, Perhaps you're fixated on the wrong kind of looking. Does that make sense? Write that down because I'll never remember it. <laughs> it's not about the fix. It's about how we use this universal principle day in and day out, minute by minute, not fix by fix. Everybody, I'm sure everybody in this room and everyone joining us on the love stream has something that needs to be fixed. Stop looking for the fix and start using spiritual law. That will automatically fix what needs to be fixed without you having to fix it. Does that make sense? Are we good? Wow, pick that, take that one home, huh? Yeah, should I just end the talk now? Okay, we'll keep going. <laughs> Some persons realizing the importance of grateful heart begin looking for things for which to give thanks. However, they mistakenly start with the perspective of inadequacy and insufficiency, and thus they simply become more conscious of limitations. Yeah, sometimes on our search for gratitude, we look, for, we look at what's missing and what the empty buckets are. Not versus, so in other words, well, I would love to be grateful for this, but I wish I really had that going on. I wish I had more of this. You know, every time we think of something to be grateful for, we also look and, we, and our minds automatically go to the bucket that's not full enough. So some persons, when they realize this, they understand, you know what? Everything rises when gratitude is in place. When gratefulness, thankfulness, I mean, it, it, it sounds crazy because, you know, here's my problem. This is a problem with the word, with the concept of gratitude. There are so few words in the English vocabulary which can describe gratitude. Think about it. It's very, very limiting. Heartfelt appreciation, gratefulness, thankfulness. There's probably a dozen or two, Right? This is not about a feeling of trying to define something by gratitude. It's something you feel. I am very grateful for whatever I have. Dr. Tom taught me I'm also very grateful for all the things I don't have. Because there's a lot of people experiencing things I'm glad and grateful I don't have to experience. So I'm grateful for the things that I have and I'm also grateful for the things that I don't have. 
You do not need something to be grateful for. You need to have the desire to feel grateful. Invoke Plato's law. When you feel grateful, you become great and eventually attract great things. Plato said that. When you feel grateful, you become great. And then by you feeling great through the law of attraction, what happens? You attract great things. Does anyone here want to attract more great things in your life? Probably. Probably. Is that what you said? Oh, bravo. Okay, good. I'm like, probably you want to attract things? I'm like, dude's got it all lined up over here. He doesn't need it, right? When you feel grateful, right? When you feel grateful, you become great. Not inadequate. See, sometimes when we talk about Thanksgiving, we talk about the, the ebb and flow, we talk about the abundance things, we, we start reflecting on the lack of in, and insufficiency versus the abundance that we do have. I love Gail and her, where's Gail? Gail? There you are. I love Gail and her video this morning. You know how she said when she was a little girl, she got a dollar for her allowance and she put 10 cents in the envelope. She remembers that, gratefully putting 10 cents in. It's not about what, it's not about an amount, it's about the actual activity of creating flow. That's what she's talking about. Become a gratitude magnet. Who in here want to become a gratitude magnet? If I'm a gratitude magnet, guess what? I have things to be grateful for. So every hand should raise. Who wants to be a gratitude magnet? Yes, there you go. Every hand should be, you should be dancing like Baptists in your seats. You should, you should be like Baptist. Like, Amen, Brother Joe. I love when people call me Father Joe. I think I need it. I always think I need you to donate my car. All right. <laughs> Gratitude creates a true spiritual family and loving support, compassion and respect. It draws one toward another, creating a true brotherhood and sisterhood of humanity. If we all raised our hand and we all really want to work toward that, then we all have a common goal. Bring life, bring things to my life to be grateful for. Let me be grateful now so I lay the path before me to experience even more. Yes? Praise yourself from weakness to strength, from ignorance to intelligence, from poverty to abundance. Whatever We increase whatever we praise. And I'm also going to say this. We increase whatever we fixate on. No, that's like the answer. The answer. Think about it. We increase whatever we praise, and I would go and say, we increase whatever we fixate on. So if we're praising, if we're grateful, that's going to grow. If we're spiteful and hateful, that's going to grow. If we're fearful and scared, that's going to grow. If we're happy and you know it, clap your hands, right? The infinite is always trying to create itself. Gratitude is a causative energy. The universe, God, spirit, whatever intelligence, Jesus, Buddha, Baha'u'llah, Allah, I don't care what you call it, is always looking to create more of itself, not less. It's not intent to create to, create, to destroy itself. That's a misuse of what the energy is for. We're seeing a lot of that in our universe where there's, there's destruction and there's people killing other people. That's not the use of the creative law creatively in a positive way. That's creatively using it in a negative way. Does that make sense? But the universe wants us to create wonderful things for ourselves. The universe wants us to be happy and healthy, to have balance in order to be joyful, to laugh, to have a great time, to eat lamb. <laughs> And gelato. Oh my God, the gelato is so good. Never mind. Ugh, see, I started to salivate. It is an instant thing about that. I got to stop that. But gratitude is a causative energy. We think of it say, saying, we think when we say thank you, that that's an effect. Think about it. I need you to reverse this. When we say thank you, we think that's the end of something. Thank you. It's actually not. It's the beginning of something. 
Don't look at thank you as being an ending. Thank you is a beginning because gratitude is a causative energy. It creates more of itself, more reasons to be grateful. Does that make sense to you? Many times we think gift, here it is, you say thank you. That's not the end of the transaction. That's not the spiritual ending of that transaction. The spiritual is that it is the beginning of something else happening. When we consciously and deliberately express gratitude, regardless of how things look on the outside, something miraculous happens, our circle of love expands. People and other gratitude-worthy experiences begin to appear in our life. Sometimes it's really... All right, I got to go to confession. Are you ready? So the last day of my trip, of our trip, I know, see, the last day of my, our trip, we had a, our spiritual practice in the morning, then we were off till five o'clock. And I was, bucket list thing, I wanted to go skydiving. I was so excited, had our appointment set, we were ready to go, I checked in. And I was 10 kilograms overweight (laughs) to jump from this particular facility. Now, they said, we can get you to another facility to jump, but you won't make your return flight home because it's going to take too long to get you back. I pouted for hours. (laughs) For hours, I pouted and whined and was miserable. Now, I had just had this magnificent spiritual experience in Australia and New Zealand. I walked and saw sacred sites of the Aboriginal people. I, I heard a symphony in, in, the, in the opera house. I, 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 I manifested whales and dolphins. We were on a boat. We were on a little boat in the, in the what's the sound? Milford Sound. And it, it was an overnight little cruise with like 60 people, right? And it, it was it, it going through this nat- nature area. And people are like, and the, the guys are saying, well, you know, it's kind of an off season. Sometimes you'll see something, sometimes you won't. And I'm like, well, what are our possibilities to see? And they said, well, sometimes you can see penguins and sometimes dolphins and sometimes seals and sometimes a whale. And, you know, your waterfalls are a sure thing. You get the waterfalls automatically. And I'm like, that's okay. We're going to manifest all of that. And don't you know? We saw a whale, we saw dolphins, we saw penguins in their natural habitat. And not only for, not just to see them from a distance, we pulled our boat right up to them and we stared them down for like 20 minutes. And they looked at us and we looked at them, and they looked at us and we looked at them, and they waddled around and jumped. And we looked at them and they said, it was amazing. We saw a dolphin, a beautiful dolphin. I've seen dolphins before, but not with a baby this big attached to the side of it, you know? And and the guide was saying, this never happens. I'm like, we're religious scientists. This happens every day. There, was, there were nine inches of snow, and, and before we got there, there were nine inches of snow in New Zealand the week before we got there. The people were like, it was sunny and 70 the entire week. It was good. They're like, we never have winter, win, uh, uh, a spring like that. I'm like, it's because we're here. <laughs> we bring those experiences. We bring those experiences to the table through what? Our own belief system. Now, you may think that's crazy, right? But even the guides were like, the guides had their cameras out. The people that are, they're the boat people that lived on, the boat people, the people that work on the boat, (laughs) they had their cameras out taking pictures going, that never happens, that never happens. They're like, it's going to happen more now with us. Anyway, just as financial prosperity serves no purpose if it is left unused, spiritual prosperity also needs to circulate if it is to grow and to be of value. So just like financial prosperity, it's not good unless you really use it, right? You put it out, you receive it, you give it, you receive it, you give it, you receive it, right? Same thing with spiritual prosperity. It's not enough to think it. It's not enough to learn about it. It only works when you work it. Then it actually circulates. Otherwise, it's just knowledge. It's wisdom and knowledge but it's not activity and action. So just like 
the, the law of circulation with money, the same thing happens on a spiritual level. It's only good when you circulate it, not keep it to yourself. Have you ever heard of the phrase Godspeed? Have you ever heard that? Right? You've heard that phrase, Godspeed? It may sound like someone is wishing the deceased a quick trip to the next plane of existence, right? Godspeed, see you later, right? Godspeed, see you later. But actually, it's this. The word Godspeed originated in Middle English and was taken from a three-word phrase, Godspeed you, which, S-P-I-E-I-D, which meant God prosper you. It was actually a wish for the soul to have a spiritually prosperous journey. So when you say Godspeed to somebody... You're saying, have a, I love this, a spiritually prosperous journey. That means relationships. It means health. It means your creativity. It means your work. It means your financial security. It means your spiritual journey. It means all of those things. So this Thanksgiving, when you're sitting around the table, just say, Godspeed, and tell them the story of what it really means. It's not, it's not a wishing to the other side. It's a spiritually prosperous journey through life. And be grateful for the one that you're on, because you're here, which means you've already taken a step. Some of you have been taking a lot of steps here for years. But you're here. You have a lot to be grateful for. We have so much to be grateful for. Start tallying that up and understand that that's what this is about. So I say to you this Thanksgiving, Godspeed. And so in your life. <laughs>